Okay, so the parts finally came in and the wheel set does not come with traction tires on it. So make sure if you ever do this, unless you want to transfer the old traction tires over to get some extra traction tires. It came in a set five, so you have some extra. Now I'm gonna put the traction tires on without it being mounted on the locomotive because I think it'll be easier, but you could do it while it's actually in place with the cover on it. I find you slowly go around it, hold the edges. It may take a few tries, but I usually get them on pretty easy this way. Slowly go around and there you go. It's gotta go around, make sure it's flat. Sometimes it'll twist up or just not lay flat in there. That focuses. You can see how it's on the edge of it. You gotta push it back down in there. So you either get a flathead screwdriver or nudge it in or sometimes you can get it with your finger. Do the other side. And there it is. So you got the part number here for the wheel assembly. And then you got the part number for the traction tires for the Mikado. I got these off of OnlyTrains.com. It's where I get the majority of my G-Scale parts from. Um, they sell them in a set of five. So you'll have some extras. Now I noticed on the uh, newer axle set I got has a little, um, what I believe this is to be like a little magnet, possibly for uh, the speed in the sound. So the sound knows when the chuff, when it's going around the track. So when it starts, you hear the chuffing synchronize. This, did, this one didn't have it on, the old one. And it may have been taken out when they did the sound system. I'm not entirely sure. The newer uh, Marklin made Mikados from LGB might be set up a little bit different. But I'm just going to kind of ignore that and just put it in anyway. I'm not sure if these washers were added too. But uh, we'll see what happens. It's a model train. Should work. Now when installing a new gear on the wheels with a steam locomotive... It's always to be sure that you line up the side rods correctly when you set the set the wheel in because if not it'll be off rotation and you'll have binding which you kind of saw in the video the past video happening so just take your time and try to line it up the best you can and uh when it's upside down the box just run it and see what it looks like so. I think he's coming off. Oh, pain. Okay. Yeah, these are kind of faced up slightly. A little nub there. Let's see. These brakes are driving nuts on this thing. Might just cut them out, honestly. There we go. This part you just gotta try to line up the best you can with it and see how it looks. Then we got the little hex screw here. Sometimes people put Loctite on these because they're notorious for coming out. Especially on like uh, Pika locomotives, a lot of people have problems with them backing out. So, uh,. You can't put Loctite on them. Of course, don't make them so tight because they are only screwed into plastic, at least on this, so. 
keep that in mind. And of course, with the cover off and a brand new gear, it's always a good idea to put some extra uh, gear lubricant on it. You don't have to absolutely soak these things in grease. Just a little dab on it. On some of the smaller LGB locomotives, the like the Steins that comes in the starter sets, they have short shaft motors in them, which is just um, a shorter version of this. Some of the ones with the short shaft, short shaft motors, sometimes the grease can actually climb up and down the shaft into the motor and it'll destroy the windings. It pretty much will cause the motor to have a mini meltdown. So it'll just ruin the motor completely. So um, this you don't have to worry too much about it. The motor's all the way back here and up kind of, almost in the firebox really. But on the, some of the smaller locomotives, if you gotta grease it, some people load them up with grease. So that'll destroy the motors on them. So that has some grease in it. Of course, this also be a good time. This doesn't have it because somebody changed it to a uh, battery. But if you're still running off track power, it'll have little uh, carbon brush pickups on the inside of the wheels for pickup power, plus the pickup shoes. Of course, checking all of that to make sure they still come all the way out and make contact with the inside of the wheels. Of course, once you're satisfied, everything looks good. I think everything's in place. Side rods are lined up to the best of your ability. So time to put the cover back on. Of course, when going to do this, make sure it's all flush against the middle of the case. There's no gaps coming up where something might be hung up in between the cover and the middle of the case on these. So once it's all flat, I'm gonna put this back in first. The center, where it swivels at. Of course, when tightening these down, you don't have, it's only plastic, so you don't have to go crazy on it. If not, you'll just strip it out. Now, I believe with the motor blocks, you should start in the center and work your way out from them. To make sure they seat correctly. I guess not a huge deal, but. I've been told that by a few different people. Start in the center, just make it snug, don't over tighten it. Then go up here. All right, that should be it. All the wheels move. Everything seems good. Now put some power to this and see what happens. Now since this Mikado has an aftermarket sound system and air wire control and some other stuff in it, it has these goofy plugs that go in between the tender and the locomotive. So I gotta plug these in. So what I've personally been using for a couple of battery locomotives is just a Milwaukee battery. They sell a few different sizes of these, how big or how thick they are. So I just bought a little adapter here. Two cables come out of it. Slide it right on. I'd keep this in a battery car, whether it be a box car or like a coal, coal hopper or something, just to hide it. I have a tender at the um, I have a plug at the back of the tender for this plug right into. Plug it right into here. And there.
there it is. I personally like using these because I have other power tools that run off the same batteries. So I have a bunch of different batteries. Man, it has a little indicator on it. These can be completely upside down, you don't have to worry about them. And, uh, yeah, works good. Holds you charge for a while too, running the trains. on this I just happened to notice on the old wheel set it's a bunch of little magnets for the um, to synchronize the chuff with the locomotive so I'm gonna have to either take those off and glue those in or separate this and put the other wheel on half of the uh, new axle so I'll see what happens you might be able to see there a little brown part sticking out it's a reed switch that would detect the magnets going around the wheel. So I gotta put those magnets back on for the chuffing. This is the old wheel set. I got half the wheel off, shoved it in a vise, pulled it apart. Plan on just putting the other wheel on the other axle, the one with the magnets on it. There we go. Okay, well, I'll slap this on the other locomotive. So you can take these apart. It just takes a little bit of force. Not preferred. Okay, so we got the back half of the cover off again. You know, lift it out. Guess what? I have it part. I'm just going to take the other uh, speed sensor out of it. See, this one should come apart. Yeah, it came right off. Slide that off. And then we got uh, this guy. I guess I'll just leave the, um, the old traction tire on this for now. Put it on it. It'll be fine. Of course, try to line up the uh, parts for the side rod. Just turn it when it's on there. Just slide right back in. And there it is. Let's see how that works. Watch the wheel fall off now. <laughs> Might have to put Loctite on it later. We'll see. Of course, if you have a, just a regular stock right from the factory Mikado, you shouldn't have to worry about this at all. But if you have some aftermarket or some used thing like this, you never know what you're getting into exactly. Uh, I went right down it. Really, you can put these back in. I guess you're supposed to take... There's a way to slide these little brake shoes off. Like, oh, just like that, okay. The proper way to do it would be sliding those off first. But the other day when I did the first video, I couldn't get these off for some reason. Now it just, just, just about fell off. Oh well, now I'm probably not gonna be able to get it back on. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, there it goes. Okay, that's not too good. picked up the magnets on the back of this that's why the sound went off all right I'll put everything back together put the screws back in the side rods and it should be good to go all right so that's all back together again start it up and see what happens
Okay, so I just did um, the extra wheel that I slid back on the axle itself. It was off just by a little bit. So that was causing this the second axle in here to actually jump up and down a little bit, as you saw. <laughs> That's running smoothly now. Okay, so I have the, my um, the factory LGB Mikado, the one you saw sitting in the background. This one's pretty much on touch that I know of. Doesn't have too much run time on it. This other thing could be wore out completely. That's why it's probably jumping around a little bit. But uh, see how this looks running upside down. Well, it's certainly a lot smoother. Well, if you liked the video or found it helpful, let me know in the comments below. I'll make some more like this when something eventually breaks.